War rages on in Ukraine as Russian forces continue their invasion. More than seven months into the fight, Ukrainian organizations here in San Antonio are rallying around tourist attractions to make a circle, signifying a circle of defense and showing Ukraine they stand with them and that their fight is not forgotten. The playgrounds that you saw on the news, it, that playground, my, my mama was taking me every other day to that playground. War across the globe hits close to home here in San Antonio for those who have a direct connection to Ukraine and those who just want to show support. Today, people gathered around San Fernando Church to stand with those on the front lines in Ukraine. You can turn off TV. People back in Ukraine, they tend to turn off Russian invasion. Those in attendance circled up to show unity and to celebrate the Ukrainian armed forces and the domestic values they're fighting for. Many people joined by not just their kids, but also their pets. Since the full-scale war in Ukraine, a lot of shelters have suffered and animals are displaced. A lot of them don't have food uh, or drink. They want to show that people struggling in Ukraine are no different from people here in the U.S., as well as the importance of not forgetting about the fight overseas. Freedom, democracy, it, it costs a lot, but Ukraine pay a lot more. We pay, people pay, pay their lives, people lose their lives, lose their families, lose their homes. The Circle of Defense campaign will also be running through Sunday all across the U.S. Coming up in our next half hour, we'll have an update on the war, along with the latest military package assistance from the U.S. All right, so what? It's October 15th, mid-October. It should be, like, kind of cool, right? You and would think. You wake up this morning. We got morning. a nice breeze today. Breeze, but the, hum <laughs> the humidity this morning. Was we it awful? It like, hit me in the face on the way home. It really was just like a wall whenever yes. you stepped outside, especially compared to yesterday morning because yes. it was so nice. We had that drier air that moved in following Thursday morning's front. And then, yeah, the humidity quickly ushered back into South Texas, making for a muggy start to the weekend. But we do have those changes on the way as we see our next and more powerful front move in tomorrow night and into the early morning hours of our Monday. Now, as we take a look out there across satellite and radar right now, not a whole lot going on. We're pretty dry. We do have some clouds streaming in from the west, some showers out in far west Texas as well, closer to the Permian Basin. I do think by this time tomorrow, though, at least here in parts of south central Texas, it'll be a little bit more of a different story. So let's paint the picture and talk about the broader setup of what's going to fuel this next rain and storm chance over the next 36 to 48 hours and also what's going to bring us more of that fall like feel for the majority of next week. So there's an area of low pressure in the upper levels of the atmosphere that is sparking widespread rain and storms across portions of the desert southwest. That's going to track eastward over the next 48 hours and that's going to fling in some additional rain making moisture as as well as some energy into our atmosphere. At the same time, our next cold front is going to be sliding southward and combine those two things together. That's why we are expecting one of the best rain chances that we have had here in San Antonio in quite some time. Let's take a look at temperatures though on the back side of this boundary. Late this Saturday night, 49 degrees up in Chicago as well as reaching over to Minneapolis, 51 in Omaha and 60 degrees in St. Louis, Missouri on the south side of this boundary, especially here in San Antonio, where we still do have plenty of the humidity in place. It is a lot warmer out there. 81 the temperature this hour here in town, 83 up in Waco, a little bit cooler up in the Panhandle. Folks in Amarillo checking in at 60 degrees. Now, as we head into our Sunday, for most of us, the majority of the day is going to be spent on the drier side. I think a couple of isolated showers to a stray rumble of thunder will be possible across the hill country, reaching over to the Edwards Plateau. But watch what happens after dinner time tomorrow, especially as we see this next front approach our area. I do think we will start to see an uptick in some of that coverage, especially across the western reaches of the area closer to the Rio Grande. And then coverage is expected to increase through the overnight hours and into our Monday. Probably is going to be a soggy start for that Monday morning commute and drive to school. So not a bad idea to 
plan on giving yourself a little bit of extra time out the door and of course take the rain gear with you and send it with the kids to school. We'll call it about a 60% potential for your Sunday night, 70% potential for your Monday with some lingering showers possible through the overnight Monday and then we clear things out as we head into our Tuesday. In terms of rainfall totals, this isn't perfect, so don't get locked in on exact numbers in exact locations, but it generally does go to show that we could find some totals in the range of half an inch to even two inches. Localized higher totals not completely out of the question. By tomorrow afternoon and evening and then into our Monday, we also might need to monitor for maybe an isolated strong to severe storm. It is the exception rather than the rule, but if a storm were to require some extra attention, I think some instances of gusty winds, maybe a little bit of small hail, not completely off the table. Again, a low concern, but something we will continue to monitor. After that, we see that breezy north wind turn back on, and then those wind gusts upwards of 25 to 30 miles per hour on Monday will filter in that cooler and drier air. Take a look at those temperatures. Next week, it's going to be chilly out there, especially by Wednesday morning, potentially waking up in the upper 40s and low 50s and then highs in the 70s. So fall is just around the corner. I'm so excited. It only took us halfway through the month of October. <laughs> Fair to get enough. There. Fair <laughs> enough. Halloween. You know. Can we please be wearing uh, sweaters? Hopefully something. <laughs> okay. Thanks, Mia. <laughs> well, we're looking hopefully cool down, but the college football season is heating up. Yeah. Larry, what can we expect? Well, uh, UTSA went on the road and they won at Florida International last night. They were favored by 33, 34 points. It was closer than that, but running back Kavorian Barnes had a huge game for the Roadrunners. And today, UT held off Iowa State to snap a three-game skid against the Cyclones. Coming up. Scoreless first quarter of Florida International last night. The UTSA runner, Roadrunners took off in the second quarter. Frank Harris here throws it over a charging defender right to Zakari Franklin, who spins and catches the ball for a five-yard touchdown. It's 10-0 UTSA. Later in the quarter, Harris finds Dan Dishman, who gets behind the defense for a 42-yard touchdown. And UTSA leads 17-3. Harris threw for 303 yards and two touchdowns. Now, running back Kavorian Barnes had the best game of his college career, scoring a nine-yard touchdown here to make it 24-3 Roadrunners. He carried the ball 20 times for 128 yards and two touchdowns, all career highs for the redshirt freshman. He logged UTSA's first 100-yard game on the ground this season. Roadrunners win 30-10, improving to 5-2 overall, 3-0 in Conference USA and here's Barnes after the game. It means a lot, you know, I feel like the coaches are starting to trust me now, you know, they're giving me more of the opportunity, you know, they seem to work hard at practice every day, and so I just feel like just the way of, you know what I'm saying, commemorating me, just giving, thank, thanking them for giving me the opportunity. He's never on a list, he's always takes care of academics, he's a 3.0 student, mom and dad are great people. I knew his time was coming. It's just a matter of when, and y'all finally got to see it. He's healthy, and he's just a very humble, great kid. UTSA will next host North Texas Saturday, 2.30 p.m. The Mean Green beat Louisiana Tech today 47-27, improving to 2-0 in Conference USA, setting up a first-place clash with the Roadrunners. UNT is led by 29-year-old quarterback Austin Ani. Say hello to Bevo, number 22, Texas, back at home this afternoon, hosting Iowa State. Final seconds of the first half, Quinn Ewers fires to Jordan Winnington on the slant for the five-yard touchdown, and the Quero native goes straight to Bevo to celebrate. Longhorns head into halftime with a 14-7 lead. They're up 17-14 early in the fourth quarter, but the Cyclones take the lead back. Quarterback Hunter Deckers keeps it himself right up the middle for the 11-yard touchdown, and Iowa State goes up 21-17. But Texas responds on the very next drive. Ewers caps an 11-play, 7 75-yard drive with a three-yard touchdown pass to Xavier Worthy. That holds up as your game winner. Longhorns take it 24-21. We did not play our best football today, clearly, um, but I think that uh, that's a sign of a pretty good team when you can fight through and persevere and find a way to win when you're not playing your best. And uh, I think it, a lot of this game speaks to our culture, um, that we hung tight together, we fought together. Longhorns will travel to Oklahoma State next Saturday, 2.30 p.m. Number eight, Oklahoma State at number 13, TCU. Both started the day undefeated, and the Horned Frogs would prevail in second overtime when Kendry Miller scores a two-yard touchdown to seal the deal. 
and the Horned Frogs win it 43-40 in double OT, improving to 6-0 overall, 3-0 in the Big 12, and Oklahoma bounces back by defeating number 19, Kansas, 52-42. UIW on the road this afternoon at Nichols. Cardinals waste no time getting on the board in this one. First Cardinals possession, Lindsey Scott Jr. rolls out to his right, and he finds C.J. Hardy wide open for a 30-yard touchdown. Scott finished the day with 327 yards and five touchdowns, and UIW cruises 49-14. Trinity wins at Rhodes today, 45 nothing to remain undefeated. Mary Hardin Baylor won at Texas Lutheran 45-16, and Texas State lost at Troy 17-14. Take you to Seattle now for the Mariners' first home playoff game since 2001. The fans were pumped for this game. Three of this ALDS between the Mariners and Astros. Let's jump right to the top of the 18th inning of a scoreless ball game. Astros' Jeremy Pena hits a solo shot to center field, and the Strohs lead 1-0, finally scoring after six hours of baseball. That took the life right out of T-Bubble Park. Luis Garcia would retire the side in the bottom of the 18th. And the Houston Astros win one nothing to sweep the series three nothing, advancing to the ALCS for the sixth straight season. In two more finals from today, the Phillies beat the Braves eight to three to win the NLDS three one, and the Guardians beat the Yankees six five, taking a two one series lead. So Tim Gerber is obviously happy about that. We've got big game coverage, water polo playoffs, and district volleyball coming up later in sports. I know Tim's happy, but I am ecstatic about <laughs> exactly. the Astros. Right. About the Astros, I know you are. We've been wa I was watching the game the entire shift today. It <laughs> yeah. lasted, like you said, six hours. Nope. Six hours. Our, producer, our producer, Alexis, held me with both hands in the air when they hit that home run. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Larry. All right. What does beer and providing food for those in need have in common? Well, the San Antonio Beer Festival, of course. We'll tell you how the community event aims to give back. A snack shop known for its delicious snacks is in hot water after its fruit was found in warm temperatures. And then came the insects who will break down their health score when we go behind the kitchen door. Authorities are investigating a mass shooting in North Carolina. Seven people shot, five of them killed on Thursday. The 15-year-old suspect remains in critical condition. Officials not releasing any details, though, on the nature of his injuries. Here's ABC's Elwin Lopez with what we know about the victims. A community now in mourning following a deadly shooting rampage that left five people dead in Raleigh, North Carolina. There are several families in our community waking up this morning without their loved ones. The victims now identified 49 year old Susan Carnatz, a mother of three, 34 year old Mary Marshall, a Navy vet set to be married later this month, 29 year old off duty police officer Gabriel Torres gunned down on his way to work, 52 year old Nicole Connors killed along with her dog Sammy. She was just a kind person, she was a good person. She didn't deserve anything like this. And the youngest victim, 16 year old James Thompson, a high school junior. Dramatic 911 calls described the chaotic scene. Oh, the action shooter, action shooter. The just came through with a chopper and shot my buddy. We heard some shots outside, and I looked out my window, and there's a, the neighbor is on the ground, I think. Oh, my God. Oh, she's bleeding. The shooting spree began Thursday around 5 p.m. in a residential neighborhood. Police say the 15-year-old suspect shot and killed two people, then fled to a popular walking trail nearby where he allegedly gunned down more victims. He was later taken into custody here at 9.30 p.m. We do intend to seek charges uh, as um, against him as an adult and to proceed to superior court with this case. A motive for the attack is still unclear. Investigators say the suspect is related to one of the victims. My heart is heavy because we don't have answers as to why this tragedy occurred. Authorities say they will release an initial report in the coming days. Elwin Lopez, ABC News, Raleigh. More U.S. aid is headed to Ukraine as the war with Russia continues. The U.S. announcing another round of military aid package worth $725 million. The news coming as Ukrainian forces continue to make important gains against Russia's invasion. This latest round of aid includes military vehicles and ammunition for American-made high-mobility rocket launchers, which have been critical on the battlefield. After days of missile and drone attacks, Western sources tell ABC News Russia is rapidly exhausting its arsenal of long-range weapons. 
Apple workers in Oklahoma City have voted to form the second ever labor union at one of the company's U.S. stores. The National Labor Relations Board's preliminary tally had the vote at 56 to 32. This comes four months after Apple store workers in Towson, Maryland, formed Apple's first ever unionized U.S. location. Workers at both locations said they unionized to have more of a say in how their stores are run. Flies buzzing around a snack shop, moldy lettuce and cheese, and a variety of insects at a fruit store. These are some of the violations inspectors found at San Antonio businesses. The night team's Tim Gerber takes us behind the kitchen door. El Chango Loco in the 2800 block of Pleasanton earned an 82 on their recent inspection. Cut fruits were being stored in refrigerators that were too warm, and there were containers of corn and pickles without date markings. Several flies were present, the inspector reminding the business to keep the back door closed and to have the AC service to keep the kitchen cool. An employee was seen putting on gloves without washing their hands, and boxes of chips, drinks, and utensils needed to be removed from the floor and placed higher up. A reinspection was ordered. <laughs> Texas meat and grocery store in the 3600 block of Culebra had moldy lettuce and cheese in a cooler. It was thrown out. The reach-in cooler where sausage, eggs, and hot dogs were stored was not the proper temperature. Clean dishes on the drying rack still had food splattered on them. A hand-washing sink was not working, and employees were keeping their open drinks in a deli cooler, and a dark residue around the walls near the mop sink needed to be removed. They were given a score of 83. <laughs> Fruteria La Mission in the 500 block of White Avenue got an 84 on their inspection. Cut fruits and cups were too warm. Other fruits for sale, including watermelon and pineapple, all needed to be removed from the blocks of ice they were stored on. Instead, they needed to be in containers or protective wrap. The ice machine had a black mold-like residue, and there were several crickets, roaches, fruit flies, and house flies throughout the business. Holes in the ceiling needed to be fixed, and a detailed cleaning of the kitchen was also needed. A reinspection was ordered. That's what's behind the kitchen door. Tim Gerber, KSAT 12 News. It's a beer lover's dream. The San Antonio Beer Festival returned. The local organization that benefits from all the beer drank today, coming up. First the lights and now the display boards. The competition happening now at UIW ahead of the annual Light the Way. UIW's Light the Way returns to campus for its 36th year. Today, 23 different organizations worked on their display boards for the contest. On top of the festive lights, the campus will be covered in decorated boards. The top prizes will go to the best design that represents the mission of the university, the spirit of the holiday season, and overall general appearance. 120 students showed up today for the event that kicks off the holiday season in San Antonio. I think it's cool because it's a lot of students in the community like um, participating to decorate the school for Light the Way and being able to like be here with like our organizations is pretty cool. There's a chance for you to get involved in voting for the People's Choice winner. Submit your vote in the UIW Facebook and Twitter pages. The annual Light the Way begins the Saturday before Thanksgiving. Beer lovers took a step out of their favorite pubs and headed to Crockett Park to enjoy the 16th annual San Antonio Beer Festival. Sadly, everyone here at KSAT missed out. But with dozens of vendors on display, it's safe to say those in attendance had a great time. The event features premium and craft beers from all over the world, from unique casts to one-of-a-kind collaborations. There was plenty for all to enjoy. We went out to work. Yeah, right? I know, right? I mean, we could have gone... I pitched this idea to go do the newscast there, <laughs> okay. but I got shut down. I was going to say, earlier this year. week, we went to Crockett Park and did our Weather on the Road segment from there oh, to kind of cool. tease ahead. So that, that was at least that cool. Yeah, just a little <laughs> bit. All right, y'all. Yes, it has been plenty muggy out there today. And as we head into our Sunday, more of the same is in store. Above average from start to finish in terms of those temperatures. We'll start off in the upper 60s, low 70s with more morning clouds. That breaks up a little bit more. More peaks of sunshine tomorrow afternoon, helping those temperatures climb 
time into the upper 80s and low 90s with an isolated chance for rain. So hot and humid for the back half of the weekend's plans, but those big changes arrive tomorrow night with our next cold front that is going to allow for some bigger and better rain chances as we get ready to kick off the upcoming work week. Plus filter in some of those cooler temperatures. We'll have another full check at your forecast coming up here in just a few. All right, so we've talked, we've complained about the humidity, like, oh, it's so hot still, but there's yeah, good bad news hair days. coming. Bad hair days. <laughs> bad hair days. Yeah, enough I don't think you have the problem. <laughs> yeah. Clutching the hairspray bottle. Yeah. That, that's been me today, in all <laughs> honesty, 100%. But yes, we do have better changes that move in next week in the form of some cooler and drier air, and of course, with some beneficial rain chances. We definitely could use it. Again, so far this year, we have officially picked up just over eight inches of rain. So to date, 2022 is in the lead for the driest year in San Antonio officially that we have on record. We are over 18 inches below where we should be for this time of year in terms of ac accumulated rainfall. But the good news is, again, we do have better chances, especially by tomorrow night and into Monday, scattered to perhaps even numerous showers and storms pushing across south central Texas and that is all thanks to yes that area of low pressure off to our west but our next cold front that is going to move through the region as well that currently sits well off to our north here this Saturday night some strong to even severe storms pushing across portions of Oklahoma reaching back over to Arkansas this hour that will continue inching its way farther down to the south here over the next 24 hours and with more of that moisture as well as the energy in place, that's what's going to fuel this next chance for rain and thunderstorms. So the majority of our Sunday for most will likely be spent on the drier side. I do think it's possible that we find a couple of isolated showers, maybe a stray rumble throughout the day, especially across portions of the hill country and reaching over to the Edwards Plateau. But after dinner time tomorrow, as we see this boundary approach the San Antonio area, area, that's when we start to see that rain and storm coverage increase first off to our west and then we'll see the radar fill up just a little bit more as we head into the overnight hours tomorrow night and into our Monday as well. So again, likely is going to be a little soggy out there for the Monday morning drive. Plan on giving yourself some extra time out the door and keep the umbrella as well as your KSAT weather authority app handy to check the radar before you do step back outdoors through Tuesday morning, early morning hours of Tuesday. The biggest things that we'll need to monitor some pockets of heavy rainfall, some rainfall totals up to half an inch, even two inches, certainly a possibility, maybe some localized higher totals as well, especially if storms are slow to move or if the heavier downpours track over the same spots. We'll also maybe need to monitor for a few localized spots of maybe some minor street or as well as uh, just a little bit of flooding there and then as we head into Monday we also will need to monitor for maybe an isolated strong storm but that is the lower concern as we head into the first half of the upcoming work week before we then see those gusty north winds take back over will be pretty breezy Monday with some wind gusts upwards of about 25 to 30 miles per hour that breeze will continue into our Tuesday but that's going to usher in some of that drier air so all of the mugginess that we felt out there today that will be shoved farther south as we head into next week as well, really helping those temperatures cool down, especially in the morning hours. By Tuesday, we wake up in the 50s, Wednesday morning, potentially the upper 40s and low 50s out there. So jacket weather is just around the corner, especially in the mornings and highs in the 70s. So not bad out there at all. And just for context, that's where we are right now. 78 San Antonio and National as well as Stinson reaching back over to Kelly 77 in Kerrville 80 over in Uvalde through the overnight hours. Some more morning cloud cover works back in. We will wake up in the upper 60s and low 70s, similar to what we found out there this morning. And then those temperatures climb yet again. We've got one more day of warmer than average temperatures before it starts to be a whole lot better next week. And all we care about is that rain. We need it so bad. Yes, so we do. Thank you. We look forward to it. I'm usually not a fan of Mondays, but that uh, temperature drop is something yeah. to look forward to. <laughs> it looks good. <laughs> All right, Larry, it's lots of stuff going on in sports. 
and high school action is included. What can we expect? Yeah, we had a busy day locally in high school sports, including big game coverage, football, Johnson and Reagan to the top teams on 28-6A. Plus, the UIL water polo playoffs are underway. We've got some action for you from that coming up. Saturday's big game coverage kicks off at Comalander Stadium for a great District 28-6A matchup between number 11 Johnson and Reagan. Rattlers trailing 10-0 in the second quarter. Caleb Capuccio finds Luke Sasser who makes the grab along the boundary for the six-yard touchdown. The Rattlers make it a 10-7 game. Jaguars answer back. Next drive on third and six. Ty Hawkins hits King Johnson over the middle. He absorbs a hit and rambles for a 37-yard gain. Later in the drive, Hawkins keeps it himself and outraces everybody to the end zone for a 16-yard touchdown. Johnson leads 17 10 and a half time, but Reagan rallies to win it 34 17. The Harlan cheerleaders welcome us to the Gus. Number 12 Harlan taking on Holmes. Hawks on the move on the first possession. No affairs on Corks. A deep ball for Mikey Deucing, and he's got it. A 70 yard completion sets Harlan up in the red zone. A few plays later, they punch it in. Jacob Gonzalez takes the direct snap, spins out of one tackle, breaks another, and races in for the eight yard touchdown. Harlan leads 7 to nothing, and they win it 48 to 6. Earlier this afternoon, Madison hosting Marshall at Comalander. Maverick strike first. Quarterback Landon Gill keeps it himself, avoids a tackle for the one yard touchdown. 7 0 Madison. Rams trying to answer in their next possession, but the pass is tipped by Caden Lomas. He returns it to the 15 yard line. The Mavs capitalize on the takeaway. This time, running back Darius Dillard powers in for the one yard score and a 14 0 lead. So let's head to the big game coverage scoreboard for that final and and Morton Madison takes it 49 to 7 and Dennis one at home today beating the prior 31 to 8. The area round of the first ever UIL water polo playoffs wrapped up today at Northside Aquatic Center. Brennan girls facing Clark Bears strike first. Alley Westendorf hauls in the pass and fires a top corner for the opening goal. Brennan Wars out to a 4 nothing lead. Clark answers back. Gino Abrahimi knocks the ball loose and puts it past the keeper. Two straight goals from the Cougars cut the lead in half, but the Bears pull away from there. Abigail Watley finds Westendorf cutting to the net and she goes left side for a 5-2 lead. The Bears are moving on with a 12-7 victory. This is the first year, so we feel like we want to make our mark, make sure our school knows there's a water polo team, make sure we get people out here to our games. So it definitely feels like we're starting off to, we're getting a great start. The Bears will take on health careers in the third round next week. You can find more boys water polo playoffs highlights from Bernie Champion, Elmo Heights and Clark on the BGC page at KSET.com. High school volleyball this afternoon at Carnot Word High School playing the Village School and District Action. Shamrocks up two sets to none and rolling the third. Julia Ortega finds Lauren Zacco for the spike down the line and a two point lead. A few plays later, Chloe Hawkins serves up an ace just nicking the back line. 10 to 2 incarnate word, and the lead only grows from there. Match point. Allison Mussey to Gianna Hilliard for the kill. The Shamrocks take the third set 25 5 and sweep the village school three sets to none. Going into the season, I was a little nervous because we did lose, um, we got lost a whole handful of seniors last year. But um, everyone who's come in has really picked it up and they've done a great job. And I think we just have so much chemistry this year. The Shamrocks will kick off a series of four straight road games Tuesday night at 615 against Cornerstone. San Antonio FC at home tonight, closing out the regular season with Orange County SC, and this match ended in a 2-2 draw. Christian Pirano netted a beautiful equalizer for SAFC in the 46th minute. That was awesome. San Antonio will now enjoy a first-round playoff bye before hosting the Western Conference semifinals. They're such a good team. I'm so excited for them. They yes. they deserve a bye. They do. <laughs> that goal, you said it yourself. That was I watched the highlight and I just went, that was nice. That was a pretty goal. Cool. It was Appreciate beautiful. That, Larry. Yep. Well, all right, hot and humid tomorrow, but changes are just around the corner with tomorrow night's cold front, rain and storm chance, and then beautiful fall like weather next week. Get excited. I'm we're already excited, <laughs> so that's great. Thanks for joining us, guys. We be sure to catch GMSA tomorrow.